Hello and welcome pilots, aviators, home builders, and people who like cool stuff all over the world. Welcome to my Dragonfly project build. And uh, we're going to talk about the project and uh, today, but maybe introduce myself. Uh, I, I did do a video a little while back about um, the wiring and the components I was using and why I was using them and that sort of thing. Um, but since I have a face for radio, I did not, um, I, I didn't put my face on and I didn't introduce myself and I really didn't introduce the project. So that's what we're gonna do today and we're gonna have a good time doing it. I'm just gonna do a quick introduction of myself, a little bit about the plane and then I'll uh, take this camera off of the tripod and we'll look at the aircraft. I'm not a professional YouTuber and I don't have a professional uh, crew or editing staff or uh, pretty much anybody to help me. Um, so you, what you see is what you get and uh, that's the way it's gonna be. So dive in, here we go, all about me. Maybe not. So here's the thing, 20 years ago I started taking flying lessons and I was in college, I worked for the local airport over here. Um, with the upholstery guy and I did the upholstery in the airplanes and I was over on the, at the airport quite a bit and I ended up basically trading and bartering and paying what little money I had to uh, to get flying lessons and you know wash planes fuel planes drag them in and out of the hangar in the mornings whatever I, I needed to do um, that the uh, that the instructors would uh, would value enough to get me in the air and of course you know cash and I didn't have a lot back then but fortunately you know flying lessons were cheaper um, overall I think uh, 30 years ago than they are today it was still expensive but um, I got about 20 hours in <clears throat> and then life happened you know I needed to get a real job I was in the process of moving uh, out of state. Um, I had some good uh, job opportunities. I felt like I had a career that I wanted to go into uh, that didn't have anything to do with the degree I'd just gotten. And basically, you know, flying took a back seat. It was over. Done. So, you know, I always entertain the idea of maybe getting a pilot's license again and I read about it and I stayed up on aircraft and, and some stuff but it wasn't until you know maybe eight nine years ago that I started kind of thinking about it again I was traveling a lot with my family <clears throat> commercial flying with a kid can be terrible um, commercial flying with my wife and my kid mmm just as bad and I started thinking in my head you know it'd be nice to have a airplane that I could just drive down the airport get in and go <clears throat> so I started looking at airplanes figuring I could buy something and get my license and uh, and then move on into into something bigger and better and I'd talk about it with my wife once in a while and eventually I just came to the conclusion that no matter what I did, no matter what I said, no matter how safe it was, no matter who, how safe anyone else said it was, she was never getting in a light airplane at least not anytime soon. Uh, with me or anybody else. I bought her, you know, go free airplane ride coupon ticket things they sell for Christmas. Forget it. Not doing it. So uh, that kind of changed the mission focus. Before, I wanted a four or six place airplane that could carry some stuff, uh, you know, Musketeer, Bonanza, Cherokee, Aztec, Pipe, um, Arrow, whatever. Um, and, you know, looking at single engine planes that would do the job, or maybe uh, at the time, you know, a Baron wasn't that much. I could get into a, an older Baron that maybe needed some some panel uh, replacements or, or upgrades. But when when I finally came to the conclusion that she was never going to fly in a light airplane, I said, "Hey, all right, that changes everything." So then I went back to the experimental 
um, and I had I had had Kit Plains magazine subscription all through high school, um, junior high I think is when I first started getting it, and I always wanted to build my own plane. And matter of fact, my career uh, in motorsports um, was kind of the perfect training for that because I learned how to to weld and to fabricate and do composites and body work and paint and suspension and engines and and all of it. I learned all of it. And it's all very handy when you want to build an airplane. So anyway, uh, mission focus changes and I start looking at long easies and cozies and um, uh, dragonflies and all that kind of thing. And this time last year, about January, maybe it was late December, my son and I drove over to Knoxville and picked up a long, easy fuselage that a guy had. And he just, he finally, you know, he'd been trying to sell it for a while and finally called me up and said, hey, just come get it whenever you can get it. Um, well, I've had so many people flake on this thing. I just, I can't deal with it anymore. So, okay, great, perfect. So my son and I loaded up in the truck, got a little trailer from U-Haul and uh, cause I have a, a big trailer that, that would have been silly to drag over there. Dra drove over there, drove back same day, no problem, easy peasy put the airplane uh, or the fuselage into my warehouse and started thinking about building it, acquiring parts and things like that. And somewhere along the way in all this, I found this dragonfly, that one right there, that guy, that airplane. I found that um, on a dragonfly message board and the, um, the fellow had it and uh, he, was, he was very honest. He's, you know, he's getting older and he had a very easy that he'd had for decades and he was building a quickie and he needed the room in his hangar to finish his quickie and he'd come to the conclusion that he was probably never going to finish this dragonfly it was just it was too far from done and and he wanted it to go to someone who would who would actually build it and here i am i i bought it um, we made a deal he gave me a, a screaming awesome super good guy deal uh, we got the airplane uh, back here to middle tennessee and uh and in the airplane shed and um and that brings us to the airplane and and not not much more to say about myself i um i've got a face for radio i'm not going to be on the camera that much um my voice is my voice i'm sorry you know it's not you know smooth and polished and uh youtube superstar uh kind of commentary i am who i am um and this is what it is so um what i hope to do is i hope to show uh guys out there that are thinking about building or maybe are building maybe encourage them a little bit and uh, give them some ideas and some things because i'm doing some unique air thing uh things with the airplane and um it's tough to build an airplane and it, it requires a lot of time and a lot of motivation, you know, it's, you know, people think it takes a lot of money, but money's, money's this much of it, to be honest, the, the, the time and the skill and just getting up every day and going out and doing one thing on the airplane is super, super important. And that's what I try and do. I try and do, uh, no matter what else I have going on in the day, if I have another project that I'm working on or, or something like that, no matter what I do in the day, I try and do one thing on my airplane. Even if it's a little tiny thing, that's one less thing I have to do. Uh, down the road towards getting it done and and that's really kind of all I have to say about me uh, you know I'm a normal person and um, and that's that's about it so I'm gonna break here um, you know I, I don't do any of the cool you know smack the camera and bam word change uh, I'm not that cool so let's get, we'll, we'll pop over to the airplane and we'll, we'll go through the airplane and um, and tell you all about it stand by Okay guys, and here we are, we're back. Like I said, no fancy tricks. Maybe I can do a fade in or something in the editing software, but no slapping the cameras or anything, uh, or magically making the airplane appear in a field. Can't do it. Uh, just really quickly, uh, this is considered a Mark III Dragonfly uh, because it is on Trigear. Uh, typically they are tail draggers, and we could go into the minutia of that, but I won't. Uh, this has uh, cast ring front gear that is uh, Grove with the built-in motor mount, which is uh, for a Volkswagen engine. 
and uh, it has Grove main gear, uh, which are aluminum legs uh, or aluminum uh, one piece unit, and of course, Grove wheels and brakes. Uh, up front here, you can see that I'm uh, doing the bulkheads. Um, this aircraft is going to be super simple with a lot of electronics um, or digital or tablets or whatever you want to call them. Uh, really uh, kind of a simplistic, overly modern system. You can see here there's the Talos box and a Stratix box uh, that I'm you know just kind of figuring out where I'm going to put everything. And then here we have one of the tablets just kind of mocked into place on some double-sided tape and a dash from one of my old race cars uh, just kind of as a, as a placeholder. And there's another tablet that I still haven't figured out where I want to do. Um, probably going to use uh, two, maybe three tablets uh, in this uh, aircraft um, because I, I am doing a lot of things uh, with computers and, and uh, electronics in the aircraft rather than steam gauges um, of any kind. Uh, I don't know that I'll have any standard gauge in here except for a uh, whiskey compass. Um, and the radios, of course, um, I'm using um, small radios. I want to use the trig and the trig transponder. Uh, but I may not be able to do that just because, you know, what's available when I'm ready to purchase it. Uh, making templates, uh, we'll get into that in an, in an actual episode on making the templates and building the interior out. And uh, as you can see, you know, it's uh, basically at the stage of uh, where you, if you bought a fast build kit when those were available from the second or third company that owned the Dragonfly um plans. Uh, if you bought the fast build kit, I think this is about what you got. The wings and canard are in my warehouse, and, and we'll have those over here at some point, so you can look at those. But here, um, you can see that the, the reason we call this the airplane shed is there's a lot of airplane uh, going on. Full size, small size, all sizes. So, um, again, uh, we have the Grove gear, and uh, that's about it. And I don't know really what to say uh, to introduce this plane any more uh, beyond what I've uh, what I've kind of gone into, and uh, the next video will probably relate um, to uh, the interior and uh, the templates and um, so you know that kind of thing. Although I think maybe the next step for this aircraft is to be uh, skewered on the engine stands and uh, with the gear pulled off and rotate it on its side so that I can get the bottom sanded and painted and smoothed out um, so that as I keep adding things to it it just doesn't get heavier and heavier and worse and take more time to do that um, and uh, so we can get all of that done and you can see the big foam blocks back there that'll be my ailerons elevator and rudder in the near future and we have sandblast cabinet and storage and we got a rack full of tools, and we got foam and materials in the corner. There's a canopy, and there's my hot box, and there's some paint. And uh, so this is just the airplane shed. There's the cowlings, uh, which I have to make, you know, bigger ones for the Corvair motor. Uh, this aircraft will be powered uh, not by Volkswagen, not by Jabiru, not by the O235 that I have in my warehouse, but no, it's going to be powered by a Corvair. Um, what, probably 3.1 or 3.3 liters, making about 110, 120 horsepower. And um, fuel injected, lots of cool stuff. There's going to be tons of cool stuff coming down the pipe on this. I'm going to try and do one or two videos a week, um, maybe more, maybe less. I, you know, with their planes, as I may have said in the other video, um, you know, you got to do something every day. If you can just do one little thing every day. That's one thing that's done, even if it's not something that you want to do because you're out of parts or whatever. It, you can get something done, get it done. And uh, that's what I'm doing. And today, what I'm getting done is I'm trying to get this video done so that I can uh, move on and do other cool stuff. And, uh, and I think we're done. I think this is good. I think it's a good place to stop. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and um, look forward to the next one. And I will... Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions, so feel free to leave comments, questions, uh, and some criticisms. Uh, I'm pretty thick-skinned, so don't worry about it. 
Until next time, you guys have a great day, great life, great evening, and um, we'll see you later.